The purpose of this bill is to amend the Sex Discrimination Act of 1984 to re-establish the definitions of man and woman based on biological sex, removing the concept of gender identity from the Act. The Sex Discrimination Act of 1984 was amended in 2013 to include gender identity as a protected attribute which created ambiguity around the legal definitions of men and women and undermined the Act's original focus on biological sex. This bill seeks to restore clarity by reaffirming the biological death distinctions between men and women and ensuring that legal protections are based on immutable biological characteristics. The activists who pretend that biology and gender are somehow contrived or cons constructed and those who believe them and enable them ignore reality in the most calculated, um, malevolent ways. I use those terms because their ideology is directly harming women and children and permanently destroying countless lives in Australian families. These are the casualties of the ideological war on the reality that is human biology. Men and women, boys and girls, these are not identities to be swapped or changed by laws or regulations or declarations. They are determined by biology, chromosomes, DNA and the physical features we are born with. We've seen a massive industry quickly emerge to mask or change the physical features that denote the gender we are born to. But the fundamental thing that determines who and what we are, that unique combination of mole molecules we call DNA, cannot be changed. It's inherited from our parents, the man and woman who conceived us. This is the reality, the unchangeable reality, that gender activists and their enablers cannot change either. It's a reality they pretend does not exist, yet it's the basis of procreation for almost every form of life on Earth that's not microscopic. That includes every mammal, every primate and every human being. It is what we are. It is how we come to be. It's the basis of our very existence. The evidence, the facts that support this fundamental truth cannot be credibly denied. Those who would have us deny it are directly attacking the rights of biological women. Yeah. For women in Australia, it's a new battle for their rights and freedoms all over again. Yeah. Biological men who claim to be women are intruding on the spaces and rights that real women have fought for over many decades. Men are invading women's bathrooms and women's change rooms, places that women have every right to expect privacy. This has been allowed to happen even in schools. Men are invading women's sports, putting women's safety at risk and making a complete joke of fair competition with their unfair fiscal advantages. Men are invading women's spaces online, spaces developed specifically as havens from the unaccountable abuse they often receive online. As we saw in the case of Sal Grover's Giggle app, the law and courts provide them with no protection against these invasions. The courts are enabling these invasions. Generations of Australian women have sacrificed and fought for these exclusive spaces. Their hard-won rights are now under direct attack. That's why I'm moving this amendment to the Sex Discrimination Act. Men may identify as women, undergo drug treatments and cosmetic surgery and wear dresses and makeup to su superficially change their appearance. But that doesn't mean they belong with real women who were born as women. With this amendment, One Nation seeks to define these women for who and what they are and protect their hard-won rights. We don't accept the ridiculous idea that this constitutes an attack on the rights of trans people. It is, quite simply, a defence against their attacks on the rights of Australian women and girls everywhere. I will keep fighting for this, and the majority of Australians with common sense will actually stand by what I'm trying to do here. You want to shut this down. You're not even prepared to take it to an inquiry and let the people come before you. you. No debate, no nothing. That's what this government's about. Shut everything down that you don't want to debate about. You're not interested in the women out there that are fighting for their rights. That's what disgusts me about you. That you what are you frightened of? What are you frightened here from the women Senator out there? Hansen, that you, direct your actually, comments to that the you chair. will not Order. actually have an, an inquiry into this that tells me how gutless you lot are. Thank you, Senator Hanson. Senator McKim. Thank you, Mr. President. I always 
Senator Hume. Senator Anson, uh, we Senator know McKim. exactly what Senator you're McKim. up to. Direct your comments to the chair. The Australian Greens see Senator Hanson for what she is. We know exactly what she is up to here because we have seen her build her grifting political career on demonising uh, sections Senator of McKim. our community. Senator McKim, withdraw that comment. I withdraw, but Thank we you. have seen her build her political career on demonising sections of our community. She started with Asian people decades ago, demonising Asian people for her own base political purposes. Then she moved on to Muslim people and she's demonised Muslim people for their religion and their culture for her own base political purposes. And now she's moving on to trans folk. The Australian Greens see Senator Hanson for what she is and we see her business model for what it is. Built on bigotry, built on racism. That is what history shows us about Senator Hanson and here we find ourselves again here today. The Australian Greens, the Australian Greens are not going to have a bar of Senator Hanson setting up an inquiry to allow trans people in this country to be demonised under parliamentary privilege. We're not going to have a bar of setting up a court for Senator Hanson to hold court in so she can run her radical anti-trans agenda. Trans rights are human rights. Trans folk in this country have every right to be celebrated, to be supported, to be loved, to be valued and to be nurtured. And I want to say to trans people in Australia that the Australian Greens are with you. We have your backs against this kind of demonisation and bigotry that Senator Hanson is trying to peddle in this chamber today. Senator Cheap Hanson Young. gutter politics from Senator Hanson and the Australian Greens will always have the back of trans and gender diverse and queer folks in this country. We have uh, uh, the only party that has a track record of every MP, every time, on every vote, whether it be in state or territory or Commonwealth parliaments, voting for marriage equality. We spearheaded that campaign and we will use that foundation to spearhead the resistance against the kind of bigotry and hatred that trans people are now facing from Senator Hanson and her cohort. Trans rights are human rights. Trans folk are beautiful. I have a, my handsome, funny stepson Jasper is a young trans man and I am so proud of him. He's making his way in life like so many other young people are with all of the difficulties young people are facing right now through uh, the environmental and climate calamity that we are living through, through uh, being unfairly priced out of the housing market, for all of the challenges that young people are facing. I'm so proud of Jasper. He's moved to Melbourne. He's got himself a good job actually in politics, not with the Greens, I might add. But he's got himself a good job in politics. I'm so proud of him. I just wanted to rule out the nepotism angle there. I am so proud of him. I'm so proud of him. He's a smart, funny, awesome young human. And honestly, Senator Hanson, I'd be happy, and I'm sure Jasper would be happy to sit down with you and have a conversation about his journey through life, the challenges Senator that, he, McKim, that he's had to face. To the chair. Uh, and I, I'm very sure that, that Jasper would be happy to, to sit down with Senator Hanson and have a conversation about some of the challenges that he's faced. But he has bravely faced those challenges. It's been an awesome journey that he's been and I'm so proud to have been part of Jasper's journey through life and I hope that it continues for many, many decades yet. Trans rights are human rights. And the Australian Greens have got the back of trans folk, and we will have the back of trans folk every single time people like Senator Hanson or Senator Roberts or anybody else 
seeks to create a platform for their demonisation and seeks to create a platform that is deliberately designed to be harmful and hurtful for trans folk. On the Sex Discrimination Amendment Acknowledging Biological Reality Bill 2024 not to be referred to a committee, that relates to I think two votes that we've had in this place um, over the past fortnight. Um, and the arguments that I've used in that are relevant here. We do not believe, uh, once uh, the Senate has um, voted to, uh, to not support the bill at the first reading, that referring it to a committee to have an, uh, have a committee inquiry into it tr seeks to do exactly the same thing as all the objections I raised earlier this week. We don't believe that an inquiry into what are um, essentially attacks on the trans community and the gender diverse community um, is, is worthy of the Senate's time. Um, where there are issues that affect and personally cause harm to individuals, again, like I said earlier in the week, we draw the line. This is seeking essentially to get around a, a number of votes in this place where a majority of the Senate has voted not to allow this bill to come into this place and be debated is now just seeking another pathway to have exactly the same divisive and hurtful um, debate um, in the committee room as opposed to the chamber floor. And for those reasons, uh, we don't support it. And I would hope that the rest of the Senate, uh, a majority of the Senate, would share that view. I don't understand why this Senate should take time to inflict personal harm on vulnerable individuals. And that's what this does. And I don't care whatever way people try to dress it up and say it's something else, it is not. It is about causing division and publicly raising concerns about individuals' personal choices, and that causes them harm, President, and we won't be part of it. And every which way this tries to get reboard into this chamber and dressed up in different ways through different motions or legislations or referrals to committee, we will have the same principled position on it. We won't, cause, we won't be part of anything that seeks to cause harm. We won't be part of anything that seeks to drive division uh, and inflict um, you know, that kind of division on a vulnerable community uh, who already endures a lot in terms of public debate about individual choices in this country. And the Senate should just get over it and stop bringing matters like this uh, into the chamber. Um, you know, really, we are leaders in our communities. We should support our communities. And part of our communities include uh, the trans and gender diverse community. And we should be thinking of them and not seeking uh, to cause them harm. That's what this referral seeks to do. And we won't have any part of it. This bill needs to be sent to committee to ensure that sensible and reasonable discussion can address the inherent error that exists in the Sex Discrimination Act 1984. It's been said that sometimes the law is an ass, or an ass, some say. What this means is that sometimes a law is made validly through Parliament that contains a blatant, obvious, overt, logically impossible, glaring, factual error. There are many examples. The error in this case is that a mistaken concept from simply saying something, perhaps based on a mistaken belief, becomes a fact, but it'll never become a fact because it's not truth. The actual mistake made in the Sex Discrimination Act 1984 is that if a person identifies as being of a particular gender, such as female, despite biological evidence to the contrary, they should at law be considered a female. This law is insane and delusional and only normalises those persons with the illness called gender dysphoria when they should be receiving psychiatric care, support and loving compassion. Now, I'm not talking about people who have a preference to partner with a person of the same gender or those who prefer to dress in the style of a person of the opposite gender to which they were born. I'm not talking about those persons who were born with both male and female genitalia, true hermaphrodites, very, very few in number but nonetheless exist. But just for me to identify as being two metres tall does not make me that tall. That's the way it is. Thinking it or saying it does not make it true. The Australian basketball team, the Boomers, is not going to select me to join their team. Passing a law that says that I'm two metres tall does not make it true. 
That's the stupidity and falsehood of the effect of the current Sex Discrimination Act 1984, a true example of what George Orwell predicted could happen in a future chaotic world. The women's rights movement took a massive leap backwards when Julia Gillard's changes to discrimination law started. It made possible the extreme examples when definitions of what constitutes a male and a female become, became blurred. We're now confronted with issues when a female enters a female-only space, such as a public toilet, and confronts a person claiming to be female who is visibly male and is biologically male. And he is invading her space. She may well be fearful of a personal safety and privacy. That's very important to consider. Women have fought hard for equal rights, only to have pseudo-women, not biological women, attack women's rights. Wanting to access the privileges of women-only spaces and opportunities. The encroachment of pseudo-women into women's sports events became a debacle at the Olympic Games recently when a biological male claiming to be a female battered women into submission to win a boxing gold medal. Battering women into submission is now a recognised sport because the International Olympic Committee is afraid to confront the truth. At the hands of the Greens and Labor, this insanity that defies and contradicts biology defies science is, def and defies science is overriding women's rights. The biologically male boxer used his strength and physical male advantage to defeat all the true women opponents in the lead-up. Order. In the lead-up events. This has led to the world condemnation of the Olympic Committee. And note, the International Boxing Federation bans biological males from competing against biological females, as do an increasing number of international sporting bodies. These are all real issues that this bill would address. And to do so simply, reinserting biological definitions of what constitutes a male and a female. I support the amendment to move this bill to committee stage. The people of Australia need to have a say. The people of Australia need to have a say. Julia Gillard's bill did not give the people a say. This Senate can rectify this. Let's listen to the people. Let's engage in honest inquiry. And I must point out, Senator Hanson is a woman. Uh, thank you, Senator Roberts. I do remind you that um, when referring to former Prime Ministers to use the correct title, I'm going to put Senator Hanson's amendment to the amendment moved by Senator Gallagher. So the question is that the amendment as moved by Senator Hanson to the amendments as moved by Senator Gallagher be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Against? No. I believe the noes have it. Aye. Division acquired. Ring the bells for four minutes. Order. There being 24 ayes and 29 noes, the matter is res res resolved in the negative.